Good evening, this is Matt Carty here in the European Parliament in Strasbourg and for the 11th time this is not the RT News. So you know how it works now. Um, this is one of my efforts of trying to keep people at home in touch with what we're doing, keeping you informed of some of the developments that are happening here at a European level and also introducing you to some of the interesting people that we get to work with. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, get yourself a nice cup of tea um, if you want comment and if you want to win a towards a United Ireland mug all you have to do is hit share and you will be in with a chance um, to win. M big milestone today folks I reached 16,000 Facebook likes yeah. thanks to the success of Not The RTE <laughs> News. So a few guests today, a couple need very little introduction. Lynn Boylan MEP for Dublin, a member of the Environment and Employment and Social and Affairs Committees. And, and what's the special one you're on? Counter-terrorism. Counter-terrorism, <laughs> the expert no on counter-terrorism, all you. committees. And an all-round sound person, despite the <laughs> aforementioned Dublin thing going on. But anyway, Emma, we? Emma Clancy, been on before. How many times have you been on now, Emma? You're like lost a, count. You're like a regular now at I'm so. Matt's employee, so I'm the fallback option when other people <laughs> fall through. <laughs> that did not happen. We have people, we have long waiting list of people who want to come on I, um, to this uh, show. Yeah. So Emma is our um, political advisor, economic monetary affairs, Sinn Féin activist, a uh, whole Australian leash thing going on there as, as well. We might get to talk about that. But our special guest tonight is a real live Englishman. Uh, Seb Dance represents London here in the European Parliament. So he's a Labour MEP, someone that actually knows Ireland incredibly well, much better than anybody who has anything to do with the uh, Brexit negotiations from oh, a uh, London true. side thing. A staunch Remainer, I think is mm -hmm. fair um, mm -hmm. description. And since the Brexit referendum actually went viral, and I mean that in the good way, the internet, the internet um, way, because he <laughs> sat beside, because this is how people will, re re is. they'll know, no, oh, absolutely. he's the guy who sat beside Nigel Farage with a big sign saying he's lying to you yeah. and the internet went crazy. Yeah. That's how I introduce myself now, yeah. pretty I know, much. Yeah, but, I'm, yeah. I'm the guy. I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 that I'm guy. The, the guy. So listen, Seb, thanks a million for coming along. You're no, very no welcome. Worries. How does it feel to be English? <laughs> what a question. <laughs> what a question. Well, how does it feel to be English? Um, well, at the moment, it's uh, being a Labour MEP, it's very difficult, you know, obviously. Because, how many in uh, um, the Labour delegation here? We, we've got 20 of us. Okay, so um, it's a big team. And uh, it's difficult because we're, you know, we're in this process that none of us wanted, and we're all fighting it uh, for, for many reasons, really. I mean, uh, not only will it decimate jobs in the areas that we represent, but obviously there are huge issues like the Irish border that nobody is really. Uh, talking about with any uh, with any kind of conviction on and certainly in government circles on on, on how they're going to solve it and mm. it's maddening it's absolutely maddening because you know, I I used to work in uh, in Belfast I used to work uh, with people who just explain that how you yeah so I was a special advisor to the the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland uh, during the last Labour government so that was not Sean Woodward that was Sean Woodward oh, yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, and you know, we were delivering the last components of devolution, the um, devolution of criminal justice and policing powers. It was, it was the last kind of peg, if you like, in, in the Good Friday Agreement at that stage. And you know, all the work that went uh, to kind of bring two communities together, um, two communities who wouldn't talk to each other. You know, I mean, it was. It, we all know the history, right? Yeah. And for Theresa May to stand up whenever it was, a, a few days ago, and say, actually, you know, we're looking at options for the border, uh, Canada, Clueless, US. Yeah, yeah, Canada, job, US yeah. is, one of the, is one of the, I mean, for God's sake, this is a, you know, a border with, with armed guards, and I, you know, I've crossed that border yeah. in a hire car. It took an hour, you know, just to cross the border, yeah. notwithstanding the queue to get through. I mean, this is just ridiculous. This is fantasy stuff. Um, but of course, you know, each stage, we, we, they kind of, Get more and more ridiculous. So we start with that. Ah, oh, do you know what? There's no problem here. There'll be no, 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 mm. no problems with the border because we have the common travel mm -hmm. area. Because the, the small thing called the single market that actually removed the checks. Yeah. You know, forget about that. It's the common travel area that will save us. Mm. And then you know we get we get um, uh, uh, fallback after fallback after fallback. And now we're at this ridiculous place where she's talking about a, you know the U.S. Canada border. Do you and know John that doesn't exist. No, uh, yes, 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 I'm, yes, say, yes. Enda Fanning here, who is an avid watcher, who's also <laughs> watching the votes today in the oh, European right, Parliament. Yes. How sad is that? Yeah. He reckons you're a John <laughs> Finucane. Uh, we're in the votes and we won't even <laughs> watch, watch it. So um, just in, apart from the whole John Finucane thing, um, 
what's your hope? How do you hope that Brexit well, pans I out over it, the next... I, yeah, I hope it doesn't happen. Right? And do you think uh, yeah. that's even a possibility? I think it's a possibility. It's a small possibility. I mean, I, I, I'm not a fantasist. I'm, you mm -hmm. know, it, 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 clearly, the government is, is, is driving us that way, and uh, all of the political indicators would seem to suggest that that's where we're heading. So you know, that's the current path. But you know what? There's so many things that nobody's really thinking through. Um, and, Yes, the government is in disarray, but actually quite a lot of the Westminster Parliament hasn't, I think, got its head round many of these issues. We obviously here, we're, we're at the coalface, if you like, mm -hmm. of what it means to be negotiating with uh, our uh, EU27 uh, colleagues, but also we know what the European issues are. We know what, what it means to work cross-border. We know yeah. what the supply chains look like. We obviously know what healthcare provision and so on and so forth. In all of the areas mm -hmm. that we work on, we understand it. And I think we're trying to get that knowledge back to Westminster as, 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 as effectively and as well as we can. But, you know, we, I think if anything changes the course we're on, I think events will. Um, and then but, people yeah, will play catch I'm, I'm just, because I'm talking to some guys here and I, you know, at home it would have been one of the first things that people said, oh, they'll vote again because that's mm. what happened in Ireland. Mm. And I keep saying, the <laughs> English are very yeah. different than the Irish <laughs> because... We, we, we made were, a decision. We have a, we'll we have a you know, neo-colonial mentality. We yeah. were, you know, we we always, despite our best efforts, yeah. um, think that Sounds Jesus were, were were you know somebody, you know, there's someone greater or worse, whatever. With them. But the English are very different. You were the colonizers, so in not the me, sense, that, no, yeah, yeah. yeah not me. <laughs> <laughs> But in terms of I, the mentality, I try and do my so I, I on always a got the sense that if it went back to a vote again, yeah. the English people would actually, uh, arguably, vote in greater numbers to leave. Uh, I don't think they would, um, for, for, for the following reason. What you've seen is that the polls are. Um, first of all, in terms of the mentality thing, nobody wants to admit they made yeah. a yeah. bad decision. That's, that's you know, human, right? But I think what you're seeing with the polls is that they are shifting very, very, very slightly towards Remain, only in one direction. Yeah. There's very little slippage the other way, which tells you two things. Because the first thing is there's a group of people who say, look, the decision's been made. I voted Remain, but look, let's just get on with it because you know, we had the referendum, blah, blah, blah. There is a bigger movement the other way from people who voted Leave who are thinking, well, this isn't what I voted for. Yeah. I thought this would be quick. I thought this would be cheap. I didn't realize that this would end up costing us yeah. money. And you know that group is the group that we should be thinking about because they're the ones that obviously swung the vote in favour of uh, Leave by a very small margin, and they're having second thoughts. I think a, a referendum on what the on what the options are would deliver, given what the alternatives to being in the European Union are, would deliver a result that would. How did Labour vote in the, on the Brexit referendum? This on the uh, resolution. We, uh, we abstained on the, on the resolution because uh, we think primarily. The EU27, this is their position, but we obviously support the logic and, and, the, and the rationale behind it, particularly on the, the words, uh, the wordings uh, um, uh, to strengthen uh, the environmental and uh, workers' rights standards, which we yeah. don't want to obviously see any slippage, yeah. but we, we would want to go further. Any future agreement with the United Kingdom has to have at its very core the maintenance of those very strong standards. We as a group, of course, along with you guys, we have been fighting for this yeah. for years and years and years. And we can't just, if we're to leave, we Throw can't just walk away and yeah. say, oh, and do you know what, it doesn't matter. I should yeah. also say the resolution was very strong in relation to Ireland, um, and that was mm. in large part due to the work of Martina Anderson, of course, who does fantastic work on our behalf, but also Brian Carty, who was on with us before, who behind the scenes has the tedious task of sitting on the Brexit steering group and mm, doing mm. Um, a, a, a lot of work. We'll come back to you in a minute. Um, Seb, Emma, will you pick a number between 1 and 79, please? <laughs> uh, 60. 60? <laughs> Usually, they, most people <laughs> go on the lower end. <laughs> OK, so this is to see who has won the mug from last month. <laughs> 60. Sinn Féin, Clockian Falla, or Clon... Canili um, <laughs> Sinn Féin. Okay, so whoever moderates that page, we're going These to get. These are fighting uh, over one more. Uh, um, <laughs> no, well, there's usually one. There's usually one moderator of these, you know, um, co common um, um, things. So, Emma, what have you been working on this week? Um, well, we've been working on a lot of tax issues as usual, um, but Emma was worried that she'd become <laughs> typecast if I asked her about I'm taxation tax issues uh, <laughs> again and that she wouldn't get any roles on there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we, all, we had a good crack at Donald Trump and the European Commission today on trade. Yeah, so I think there's also a lot going on on trade that we haven't actually really, well, we haven't, hasn't really been discussed on your show. Um, you obviously spoke this morning in the plenary debate on the 
the U.S. government's announcement that it was going to impose uh, new tariffs on steel and alumini aluminium. Um, <clears throat> but I think the discussion that we need to have is about the EU's trade policy and how it is emulating the the previous um, U.S. You know, for decades, yeah. uh, their their standards, their approach, um, and we've seen the results of that in the United States, and we've seen the disenfranchisement and the huge increase in inequality, not only to do with trade um, trade policy, but other policies, of course, as well. Um, so recently, about a week ago, the, there was a report, the, new, the World Inequality Report of 2018. Um, it's an extremely important report that actually doesn't look at just the, um, the, the decrease in inequality between countries, but it looks at the increase in inequalities within those countries. So what we see is that, um, I mean, there have been, you know, analyses done of it and uh, looking at some of the myths of globalisation. Um, of course, we, you know, I think most people watching your program would, would be aware that the trickle-down uh, myth is just that, a myth. Um, but the, the, the key finding was that trade doesn't cause poverty or inequality, policy causes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah, but Trump has exploited the whole oh, of course, of disenfranchisement course. that, I mean, that the, it's made. And that's, I think, the, you know, in many cases, the, the Commission, the European Commission are going straight into that trap again. They're yep. allowing this descent to, uh, um, to, to ferment. So if, and, if you look at what happened, I mean, the, the real reason why, the, why working people uh, in the United States are so um, vulnerable to being exploited in, the, in this way is primarily because of NAFTA. Mm. So you have, you've had a couple of decades now of this disastrous trade agreement. So Bill Clinton promised that NAFTA would create uh, 20 million jobs in the United States, export-led jobs, um, when in, in fact uh, studies have shown that actually NAFTA resulted in a net loss of 1 million jobs in the US. And then obviously for people in Mexico, for farmers, for workers, it was even worse, the results. Um, but we haven't, I mean, we don't have that huge level of inequality and that huge level of uh, poverty in the, in, in the EU because, because of, of the policy. State, though, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. because of policies that have been implemented. But what we see now is through um, austerity being pushed by the Commission uh, and the, this new generation of free trade agreements, which the Commission is really running on, um, it's it's inevitable that it's going to actually cause a massive increase in equality in I was listening to Nigel Farage yesterday. He claimed that the, um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he goes, the, the Brits and the US under Trump oh, yeah. could uh, negotiate hours. a trade deal on the 48 sure. uh, in 48 Eight hours. hours. <laughs> and why not? If you put Nigel Farage, yeah. Theresa May, and Boris Johnson in a yeah. brewery for 48 months, they still couldn't organise a piss up. <laughs> Never mind, actually negotiate a trade a trade deal. Um, but where were you with the sign? You could have, I you know, know. I, I, I should basically, I, I was thinking I should have just, just a t-shirt and I was just surreptitiously <laughs> yeah. sit next to him. Yeah. I could have one point in left, one point in right, depending on what <laughs> seat's available. Yeah. You know. I mean, I want, stupid. Yeah, I wanted to <laughs> exactly. um, talk to you a bit about neutrality because Fine Gael, for the first time, are actually being a bit honest about where they stand on yeah, Irish neutrality. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we see how they vote out here all the time, so we know that they, I mean, their voting records clearly shows the direction that Fine Gael wants to take Ireland in, which is, of course, just abandon neutrality and sign up, uh, you know, fully to the Common Security uh, Defence Programme. So they produced this document on Friday, but, you know, the Brian Hayes logic um, of neutrality and how we need to reconsider it because it'll make Ireland somehow safer from the threats is like the Donald Trump school, you know, school of thought around guns. It's like how to make Ireland safer. Well, let's make it easier for us to enter into conflicts and actually add more arms and we weapons um, in the process. So, you know, we've gone through the document. It's you know, there's nothing new and it's nothing surprising as such other than the fact that at least they're, they're now they're, at least yeah. they're now coming out publicly and saying it mm. um, so we can have that debate. Um, but yeah, I mean, like only yesterday they voted to give half a billion of EU budget to this uh, European uh, development body, which technology development, which is effectively giving money to the arms industry. Uh, they Lovely say people. the way that they get around the EU rules around not spending EU budget money on military capabilities is that they say, oh, well, it's for research, but it's arms companies carrying out the research. Um, so we're subsidising the arms industry. 
thanks to Fianna Gael. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big issue because it goes to the heart of, and I think it's a starting point because I think it's, it's fair enough to have a discussion on it, but your starting point is it, do you see a value in actually being a neutral country and engaging mm. in conflict situations on the basis of neutrality that you can, you can be a, a, a conduit for dialogue and um, resolution, yeah. or do you actually want to pick a side and go in under the coattail of Germany oh, no, and say, absolutely. let's actually engage on NATO missions? I mean, I think Irish people are very proud of, of our neutral stance, and the polls that have been carried out for decades show that, that the vast majority of people are very proud of our record on neutrality. But also it does allow your peacekeeping forces to go in, and they are seen then as honest brokers. I mean, what, what Brian Hayes and his three Fine Gael colleagues are proposing is to look at the triple lock system, which is where the Irish government would have to support uh, a military action uh, the Dáil and the UN would have to sanction it. They want to, to do away with that. And one of the proposals they're saying is with the European Council could decide and then you'd have the Dáil vote as well. But I mean, only before Christmas they voted to remove Ireland's veto at the European Council in terms of common security yeah. defence. So we're going to hand over to the Euro EU and the big countries who, of course, are living out the legacies of their imperial past and Fine Gael want us to go in and, uh, and join their ranks. So it, it is a dangerous, I mean, it, it, it's dangerous territory that they would be taking us in. It means we can take them on now because at least, because we, the, the, there's nothing more frustrating than when you're actually pointing out someone and they're just saying, no, we're not, yeah. which is what Fine Gael were always doing on Fianna Fáil as well on, yeah. on neutrality, because you'd say you're undermining our neutrality. So no, we value our neutrality. And then like I was looking back today at some of the old Lisbon Treaty referendum, particularly the second one, the triple lock was this guarantee. Yeah. You, we don't, you don't need to worry about Irish neutrality because the triple lock is there and we were making the case rightly as it turned out that well actually no the triple lock is only there so long as we actually have a government you can trust and uh, absolutely we, I mean and, and like it, you know in, in the debates he's, he's giving the example of Macedonia and you know how Ireland mm. couldn't go in and help there because the UN didn't sanction it but I mean we all know the very the, the, the big war, the one that we're still living the legacy mm. of, the war in the, the Middle East, was a war that wasn't sanctioned by the UN. So I mean, mm. like the UN is absolutely flawed, it has its problems, but it is the system that we have and we can try and reform it, but don't try and, and you know, just side throw, exactly it. sidestep the UN and, and give it over, give the decision making over to the European Council. Just before I come back to Seb, Emma, the new committee, the taxation committee, just, I know you don't want to, but just spend 30 <laughs> seconds explaining what it is and how we're going to use it. Um, well, it's pretty exciting, actually. Uh, Matt has just been appointed as the vice chair of this committee. Very everybody. exciting. Congratulations. So. <laughs> very exciting, yeah. Um, so the committee, it's called... Which is a very powerful position. <laughs> it's enormously powerful. Yeah. I'm not even worthy to sit. <laughs> yeah. I'm not quite yeah. feel the power. the front of the hearings <laughs> instead of sitting, you know, at the back. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the committee has been set up to examine financial crimes, tax evasion and tax avoidance. Um, so you probably would have been, uh, well hopefully you would have noticed that Matt has been very active on this issue um, over the past couple of years uh, and was um, very active on the Panama Papers Inquiry Committee. So that committee came to an end in um, December last year, but before it did, um, the Paradise Papers leak from the law firm Appleby happened. Um, so uh, MEPs were very eager to continue their work on uh, combating money laundering, um, ta corporate tax evasion, and tax uh, ta <laughs> tax avoidance and tax evasion. Um, so, and that continues also on from the previous tax yeah. committees, which were set up to examine the LuxLeaks. Um, so, I think it's it will go for a year. It will go up into the next um, elections. There are 45 MEPs who are members of it. Um, during the negotiations, we were able to put in things like um, or win support for. Uh, examining bilateral tax treaties, so that will give us the opportunity to look at how the double Irish remains in place through Ireland's network of tax treaties. Um, we also put, were able to get a focus on the role of the UN in addition to, obviously, we see the Conservatives kind of constantly pushing this OECD, thing of, yeah, yeah the, the OECD, which is just, you know, it's an important body, but it's essentially a, a club of rich countries and the developing countries don't actually have a seat at the table. They're obliged to implement the rules, 
but they don't actually get to participate in the decision-making process. So that was another big focus for we'll us. Come, we'll come back to that because I want to talk to Seb. Just to remember, keep hit and share to be able to chance to win the mug. Somebody has asked the question as to whether or not they are machine washable. Um, <laughs> the answer to that is I don't know. Um, Linda's all the washing for us over here. Um, so, um, but what you need to do, true. what you need to do is hit share. Be in with a chance. If you win it, get it, put it in your dishwasher and then let us know um, how it goes on. Seb, um, I just want to talk to you. Labour under Jeremy mm. Corbyn. Are mm. you excited about that? Uh, you know, I don't have a choice. You know, well, <laughs> to be excited, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, so, um, it, it, lots of people, um, including um, myself, are looking at British politics in a mm. way that we never thought was possible. Bet, yeah. um, it, you know, yeah. Apart from the complete hames that you know, the Conservative government but it's what's, hap amazing, what's happened on the left is quite yeah, phenomenal. Like yeah. You actually have you know, a self-declared socialist yeah. um, um, leading the party and you know, huge numbers of young people um, mm -hmm. joining. You mm -hmm. know, what, where, where do you sit on all of this? And well, it's, um, uh, I'm increasingly you know, of the view that we are living through the most extraordinary transformation mm -hmm. that none of us really can, yeah. un can understand because uh, yeah, the thing about historical periods is you don't really know you're you living know in one until yeah. <laughs> people write about it years yeah. afterwards. But Except if you're in Sinn Féin, everything we well, do is always, historic. Exactly. Everything's you know, historic. We, we um, organise a common meeting, it's historic. It's yeah. the 11th show, it's I am historic. part of history today. <laughs> yeah. very, and, you know. yeah. um, but look, it, it's, uh, it, it's clearly happening in all fields. It's happening in the economy. It's happening in the way in which we relate to each other, you know, the, the communications between citizen and authority. And, yeah, it. and so it's happening in politics. Mm. And um, I think that the kind of old assumptions on, on how party structures work and have served people and communities, I think, are breaking down. And, and Jeremy Corbyn is very, very different to, to, to you know, as a kind of leader, um, to the to the kind of leaders that we've we've, we've had. Well, he's no Tony Blair. He's no <laughs> Tony Blair. That's most definitely not. And well, yeah. well we're going to yeah. disagree on that yeah. one. I, I, he I, Tony did great work in Ireland. Did, There's no doubt about it. He did great work in Ireland. He just fucking caused almost havoc well, across the globe yeah, and another. Yeah. But that's a different yeah. debate it, for another day. It is day. a different debate, yeah. but it's uh, it's, but it's a debate worth having. But as a Labour representative, you must be confident about the next general election, though, in terms of. I I well look. People are joining the party. Um, we're, we're tapping into an energy and a, a cry for change that is is real, and we have to, you know, we have to, uh, we have to deliver the right kind of change. Yeah. My beef is that Brexit is the wrong kind of change. You know, the the, 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 the things that drove Brexit are real. You know, people's yeah. disaffection, the fact that they feel that they don't have a voice, the yeah. fact that yeah, as some of the issues you've been mentioning. Yeah. With globalisation, there is a there is a real feeling that we are losing control over the way in which we we run our lives. Mm. So we have to respond to that. But my contention is that Brexit is is completely completely uh, the wrong answer. It will make it worse for people. Um, so that's basically what I'm trying to do with the, with the Labour leadership is make this point. I'm sounding a bit like a, a broken yeah, record no, sometimes, but you know that's the point I'm I, I'm making to them. And I, I think you know we're in a much better place than the Tories certainly on this. You know, customs union will go some way to solve the border issue. It was a big issue. move. In it terms was a big of issue, but you know, it was a position. big move. But we, we need more. You know, we, we, we need a lot more than just the customs. Although union. I find it amazing when you look back. Mm. You know, I, there's a YouTube video of Daniel Hannan, and mm. he's quite clearly saying, oh, yeah. "Leaving the EU does yeah, not yeah, mean yeah. leaving the customs yeah. customs union." And the, yeah. Yeah. But you also said, yeah. "Don't worry about the border." Yeah, that's, ah, that's, yeah. That's an yeah, well, yeah. Well, he was what he meant when he said, "Don't worry about the EU." the border is I don't give a shit yeah, about yeah. the Irish border and neither right. does anybody but, else on the border. But I mean side. if if it yeah. was the case that Brexit doesn't happen could you imagine <laughs> going back as a British MEP to everyone who spent the last two years talking about nothing else and trying to negotiate Brexit? But it means we get to keep Martina. I think you'll get all the worst, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the worst yeah. You get to keep Martina committees. subject to re-election. You get <laughs> no. to keep me subject to re-election. No, no, as, as a guest. is our full top in MEP, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll have you know. Okay, well, so I can't compete with her. Any system. plans, any ma major issues happening just so we have a few minutes left? Ah, uh, good. Um, well... What, what's exciting you at the moment, Emma? Well, just yet another report proving that Ireland is a tax haven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, allegedly. I am going to Geneva to stand up for uh, the Catalans. Oh, well, you're going to choose And the UN, yeah. <laughs> you're going. Yeah, I'm going. I am going, yes. I cannot say no. What's Damien McTomas doing in Helsinki? He's... <laughs> 
he doing on Facebook? He's supposed to be working. It's like watching, watching, live, watching live Helsinki. Love your show, Matt, he says. So, and I believe him. Um, what are you working on in your set in terms of reports? Or? Uh, working on uh, emissions, uh, of, of car emissions uh, in the Environment Committee. Um, and I'm working on a, um, a file on, on uh, forestry and indigenous communities living in, in areas that are being deforested. Oh, That's nice, handy committee. issues to resolve. Yeah, yeah, yeah small you can, you things. Can get them that, Done yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 48 hours just <laughs> after night. Fair play. So listen, hit chair. We're going to finish off now. I try and finish on a song. Um, oh, it's just one of the things I, 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 I do. A little he bit has terrible taste in music. A little, 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 little bit of music. But it we're is... not singing. Though, right? No, no. <laughs> no, no. When you can sing, you he just usually okay, plays a really you terrible can sing, song. You can sing along. Um, it's St. Patrick's Day Way. on um, Dam Saturday. Damien, who you just mentioned, is organising a potato party for people in Brussels. <laughs> okay, that I don't know. Because they don't have enough very, potatoes in Brussels, yeah. right? <laughs> very ingenitive or um, very insulting. I'm, I'm, not, saying, I'm, I'm not very sure. proud of my office, my <laughs> office, sure which, But listen, wherever you are, and especially those people who aren't going to be in Ireland, have a great um, St. Patrick's Day. Thanks a million. Thank you, Seb. Not thank sure. you, Emma. Thank you, Lynn. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I love the dogs next weekend. Weekend after. Weekend dancing.